Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's NAAI series webinar. I'm Curtis Kitchen, the Director of Publications and Trade Show for the National Auctioneers Association. And I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's newest iSeries installment. iSeries is a free informational webinar series produced by the NAA in order to share auction industry knowledge and insight with NAA members and the general public. We're excited to present today's topic, but before we dive into today's session on Salesforce development, we want to share a little more with you about who we are. Headquartered in Overland Park, Kansas, the NAA represents the interest of thousands of auctioneers in the United States, Canada, and across the world. NAA is dedicated to providing its members with educational programming and resources to help them advance themselves as professional auctioneers. Members abide by a strict code of ethics and are connected locally, regionally, and nationally to an extensive network of auction professionals. The NAA exists in order to provide critical resources to auction professionals that will enhance their skills and successes so that its members will become the preferred auction professionals used in the marketplace. Among those critical resources is the iSeries, and today's session is to discuss Salesforce development. Our speaker for today's subject is Matt Corso. Matt currently serves as the, as the Chief Financial Officer for Martinet Alliance, a national franchise of auction companies. He had served as the Chief Operating Officer of Marknet for seven years prior to his role change at the end of 2014. Prior to his employment with Marknet, Matt served as the Chief Operating Officer of Almond Auctions Incorporated, a nationwide auction firm specializing in several niche markets as well as real estate. Matt has completed the Certified Auctioneers Institute program held at the University of Indiana in Bloomington, which earned him the prestigious CAI designation. He has also obtained the Certified Estate Specialist designation. Prior to his auction industry career, Matt served on the board of directors and as the managing editor for the Breeze Courier newspaper in Taylorville, Illinois. He did that for seven years, and with all of that combined experience, we're absolutely thrilled to have him present for you today. Before Matt begins, however, please note that you may submit questions at any time during the presentation. These questions will then be asked during our brief Q&A period following the conclusion of today's talk. You can take part in the conversation by typing your question and submitting it. A little later after that, we will also ask you that you please take part in a very short three-question poll. That way we can get some pretty valuable feedback in making sure that iSeries continues to meet the highest standard. With that, we are extremely pleased to hand things over to today's presenter. Matt, the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate uh, very much you having me, uh, having me on today. Um, it's definitely a great topic uh, to get to speak about. Um, and... Uh, just really excited about this and excited about uh, the upcoming uh, event that the NA is uh, hosting at the end of February uh, that's going to continue to talk about uh, your sales team and the management of your company. Um, but today we're going to be talking about developing your sales force and developing your sales force culture. And um, we'll go ahead and go to the, uh, the first slide that I had there. Um, <clears throat> When you start to think about developing your sales team and really developing your team in general, uh, the first thing that you have to think about is you. Um, you and your role in your company. And making sure that, uh, that, that you're in the role and you're doing the things that you want to do. Um, you know, before you can add your staff and your sales team, uh, you, you've got to make that decision. Uh, evaluate what you're currently doing. You have to look first at what you're currently doing and figure out is, is that where you expected to see yourself? Is that where you wanted to see yourself uh, at in your company? Or are you just doing that because those are the things that you feel need to be done? Which oftentimes is the case. We, we just, uh, as, as people who are managing businesses, uh, running our own companies, we're just getting the things done that we need to get done. And uh, what you really have to do is decide what you're going to do. Um, and that could be how it affects you in your personal life, in your business life. But overall, you got to say, look, if I'm not a good manager, if I'm not uh, good at the financials, if I'm not, you know, good in the sales role, then I have to find what role I, I do excel at and work to getting yourself into that position. Then once you have done that, that's when you can really begin to develop your team, really begin to develop your company's culture um, because you have to get yourself in a good spot first and really when you think about yourself be sure to think about yourself in your company and be sure to think about yourself uh, in your um, uh, personal life as well because 
what you do when we manage companies, when we run our own businesses, that's going to affect really every part of our lives. So the role that we put ourselves in, the role that we desire to get to, the team that we put around us is going to affect every aspect of our lives. So the first thing you have to develop is you before you can develop your, your sales force, before you can develop your team, before you can develop your business. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So you've made a decision. You know who you want to be. When you all grow up, you know what you want to do. You know where you want to go in your, your company uh, for yourself. Now you need to set clear direction and goals for your company. You hear everybody talk about it. You hear uh, people, you know, especially at this time of year, hey, we're setting out goals for the year. Um, but the key is you really got to do it, and you got to have some sense of, hey, I, I want to get somewhere with this company. I want to be to to X, and you know, I'm, I'm I got to start at point A, but I want to be to 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 the end of this road, and. Um, so the first thing that you do is say, okay, I know where I want to be. Now I'm going to set out my company goals. As you set out your company goals, be very specific. Make them, you know, measurable. Got the little little uh, graphic there that says, you know, smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Uh, it's very important that you hold to some sort of standard like that. I mean, you can find different variations of this, and it's maybe a little cliche. Um, but the bottom line is the reason why we hear things like this a lot because it's very, very important. Okay, So start to set goals for your company, and as you're setting those goals, keep in mind what you've stopped and thought about and worked on when you're thinking of, okay, I want it to be this. And as I'm setting my goals for my company, do, do they reflect on who I've just said that I want to be in my company? If me being the CEO of my company and truly acting like a CEO has me in my goal setting, I'm coming back and, and doing the role of the sales agent, uh, I need to change the way my goals are working. So make sure your goals that you set out, your strategy that you set out, reflects who you want to be in your company. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay. This is, this is one of the most important things. And um, many of you may have heard this at, at some of the uh, presentations at some of the state associations, maybe even some of the stuff that NAA has done. There's been some speakers out talking about this. Extremely important when we're in this process right now of, of kind of reevaluating our company, reevaluating us personally and our company. But we have to go, why am I doing all this? Why do I want to build up my company? Why do I want to set these goals? There's lots of questions, but the biggest thing you have to figure out is the why. Once you know why you are doing this, then you can kind of come back and even reevaluate your goals, reevaluate your role. Um, I had spoke with uh, with uh, JJ Dower at one point who who uh, he had been at some other seminars, and he came back to me, and he talked to me about one that he had been at. I believe he was at the California State Association. And uh, um, he had talked about the speaker he heard, and they were drilling down with somebody who said, hey, you know, why, why did you have these specific goals? They said, well, you know, I want to do it to, so I can make more money. Okay, well, why do you want to make more money? And you kind of go through that, and basically it came down to, this person wanted to make more money so they could take their children on, you know, an epic kind of vacation adventure. And so your why is not about making more money. Your why is about what you can do for your children. So sometimes our why may be, hey, I want to I want to get my business to a great place so I can spend more time with my family. But maybe if my role is is a specific spot in in the company. Uh, I won't be able to spend more time with my family. I'll spend less time with my family. So our goals, have, we really have to decide why we're doing this, what we're wanting to achieve, and make sure our goals that we set in place take care of the why. And then reevaluate your goals. Make sure they're in line with, with why you are doing this. All right, let's go to the next slide. Your skill set. Um, we've all got skills. We just got to make sure we're using the right ones. 
All right. Um, when you're building up your sales force uh, and uh, your great company culture, make sure that you know the limits of your time and your skill set. For instance, if you're not a great manager of people, but you're building a great team around you, make sure that team that you're building includes a great manager of people. Because if you don't, if you make that your role and that doesn't fit into your skill set, you're, you could put the best team in place. You could put the, the, the best sales force in place. None of that's going to matter because you're putting yourself in a position that you're really not good at. You have to be able to answer tough questions about yourself and about what you're really skilled at before you build this great team around you. And if you've already got a great team, you still need to reevaluate, say, you know, is my skill set right? Do I have people in the right, you know, right positions? Maybe I need to make some changes there. Evaluate your skill set. Evaluate your team's skill set and make sure that <coughs> you're not asking yourself or others to do things that they are not skilled or qualified to do. Okay? If they're willing and able to do something, you know, you put them in, in those roles. Don't put them in roles that, that, that they're not skilled to do. All right, let's go to the next slide. Support your sales team. Um, this kind of reiterates a little bit of the last slide, but just like you, uh, your sales team is not going to be good at everything. As you're putting your sales team in place, as you're creating this great sales force, don't expect your sales team to be great at technology or great at marketing or a great manager and a sales agent. You've hired this person. You've put this person in place because you're wanting them to be a part of your sales team. Okay? You can't expect them to be your technology department as well. You can't expect them to also be your marketing department as well. You may ask them to do other jobs. You may ask them to be a part of other portions of your company, but don't think they're going to be able to be all things to everyone. It's just not going to happen. It's not practical, and it's not going to develop a great culture for your sales force. So support that team with those people. You got to put those people in place around them. Um, so, you know, need need somebody skilled in technology? Hire a tech person. Need somebody skilled in marketing? Get marketing people in place. All right. You need good managers? Get good managers in place. Put people in the right places. That will develop a great culture around you. When people are in positions that they're not skilled at or when you're, they're asked to, you know, maybe they're in a position for a job that they are skilled at, but they're asked to do too many other things that's out of their wheelhouse, it does not come back and create a great culture for your, for your um, company. All right, so next slide. Um, <coughs> as we begin to put our team together, as we begin to develop our kind of culture, and we start to work on our strategies and stuff, we got to make sure that uh, not only are we using the right people for the right skills, but that the people in general are going to mesh with our team, uh, that they're a good fit for your particular culture that you're wanting to develop. Now, there's no one set great culture uh, that everybody's office should look the same, that everybody's sales team should be the same, or your you know, atmosphere is always going to be identical to every other company that's out there. In fact, it's probably going to be quite a bit different because this is going to reflect you as a leader in your company. It's going to reflect what you want your business to be. And as you bring on new members to your, to your staff or to your sales team, you need to do good research on them. Um, not just from the resume that says, hey, man, they have all the qualifications for what we need, but you need to make sure that their personality fits. I would consider doing uh, some personality tests before they come in. Um, 
there's just a, there's a wide variety of those out there. I mean, you can get online, you can search, you can look those up. Uh, you can even hire some folks to uh, to to do that. You want to make sure that they they mesh with with your current team. You know, evaluate your current team that you have in place. Have them take the tests as well. Um, <coughs> you know, check them out on social media. I mean, there's so much stuff out there now uh, that we can find out about folks, and not to just dig into their personal lives so much, but just you know, see kind of what they reflect, and is this going to be somebody who's uh, who's going to just fit and mesh with the folks around you because that's so important, especially bringing people into a new environment um, that we've really done our research on on who we're bringing into our team. All right, uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um, strategies and systems, uh, very, very important. If we're going to have a successful company culture, we need to have solid strategies in place for booking our auctions. Um, I can't stress enough, we can't bring people into a sales team and expect this great sales team, sales culture, if we're not giving them something to sell, okay? So when somebody comes into your team, you really need to have in place this step-by-step -step recipe of how things go from before the auctions even started to post-auction. You need to have those steps in place. You need to have some sort of system, some sort of software. We're going to talk about this some um, in February um, as one of our things, but something that helps us when we bring somebody in that they can go, all right, here's what I need to be doing. Here's the steps that I follow. Here's what's going to happen next. I'm going to do this. The deal's going to get booked. I'm handing it off to person A. They're going to do these steps. That goes to the next person. You got to have those steps in place. I've had the opportunity to talk to lots and lots of auction companies. I'm very fortunate in the people I've had to, been able to interact in uh, within our within our industry. And um, one of the things that's so often uh, found in so many companies uh, in the auction industry is that when we talk about, you know, do you have a good system in place for your team to follow from pre-auction to post-auction? Oftentimes they say, well, you know, we did, we started to write some stuff down, we don't always use that, you know, we kind of forget some things, fly by the seat of our pants a little bit, which, which I understand, hey, we've got to be nimble, we've got to be able to make changes, but when you're bringing in somebody and you want them to have a great culture, you need to have that step-by-step -step recipe for them to follow. That's not just your sales team, that's also for people who are in your, your marketing department or people who are you know, on your management team or on your closing department, whatever the case may be, you got to have your strategies and systems in place. Give them something to, to sell. Give them a plan to follow. Okay, next slide. All right, we're talking about sales force development. And uh, one of the big things that I get asked often is, you know, what do you, what do you what do you what do you pay these folks when you bring in new agents? What are what's what's what are we supposed to pay them? How are we supposed to split the deal with them? The one thing that I can say is, it just has to be good, fair compensation. We're bringing people in, asking them to sell a product for us. Sales folks, like so many of us, you know, we like to go out, we like to get deals. And because of that, we like to get rewarded for what we're doing, okay? We can't expect good retention and maximum effort without paying for it. Sales agents are going to look for a great support system and opportunities to maximize their income. Give them incentives for meeting and exceeding their goals, and it will help you retain them. Whatever that is that you put in place, it's got to be fair, it's got to be good for you, it's got to be really good for them as well. I know there's always some nerves about, you know, what if I what if I give away too much? What if I'm training up my competition? And you know, there's always a case that, that they may they may leave and, and go somewhere else or you know try to start their own thing. But if you have the really good support system in place that makes them feel like you know what I can I can come in and I'm I'm in what I can do well, which is sales. I get compensated very fairly for it, 
you know, if you're supporting them with all these other pieces and compensating them well, truly believe that you'll be able to maintain good, good salespeople in your in your office. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Your expectations. All right, don't waver on what you expect from your team. Set your expectations high and then stick to it. But here's the thing. When we set out our expectations, we have to be very clear as to what we want from everybody. Once we know what we want, we've set that out, then let's hold to it. Now, these expectations should be beneficial for you. They should be beneficial for your company, and they should be good for your team. So that's why the, the little graphic kind of shows a sweet spot where you're happy and the salesperson's happy, you're happy, I'm happy, we're right in the right spot. That's a high expectation that's beneficial to everybody. Stick to it and be clear on them. All right, let's go to our next slide. All right, we want a good, we want a good team. We want to be meeting our expectations. We want to be meeting our goals. You need to meet and communicate with your folks regularly. Now, don't be like the picture, right? Meetings can be terrible. They can be boring. Can be just awful. <laughs> I found this picture funny because the guy who's conducting the meeting is also asleep. Um, so you have to make your meeting mean something, okay? But I, I, I'm a firm believer whether it's a phone call, whether it's something, meet with your team on a regular basis. Uh, keep it brief. Make it productive. Always review your expectations and your goals. Don't set a meeting schedule that you personally can't keep, that you cannot be involved in, okay? That's going to show through to everybody else. Uh, have an agenda, stick to it, don't wander, don't waste time. Um, and the person leading the meeting, their energy level is going to set the tone for the meeting. Uh, so regular meetings make them productive. All right, next slide, please. Personal growth. Um, you want to have a good culture in your office, make sure that you're giving your team opportunities to get further education, to grow in your business, and for them to grow personally. Um, encourage them in, in new ways to, to expand their knowledge in different areas. Um, help them to expand personally. Help them to expand professionally. But if you give them opportunities to grow, um, they're going to see that you see value in them, that you care about them and concerned about them. It's going to add to a, a great company culture. All right, next slide. <coughs> you got to move forward. Keep moving forward. Don't fall in a rut. Don't allow things to become stale. Um, you know, the, the cartoon says, hey, what if we don't change at all and something just magically happens? Well, we all know that's not the case. That will not happen. Um, it's just not, it's not going to work. Um, keep your sales team striving for new things. Give them new ways to sell your product, new ways to bring the product to market. Give them new op ideas and opportunities on how to sell. Keep your company moving forward in some way or another. Keep trying new things. Don't just get in that rut of, hey, this is what we've done. This worked in the past. You know, we've had great success. Even if you've had great success, if you're having great success, keep looking forward. All right, next slide. Give them the resources and the brand, all right? Provide them with the tools. Give them something to sell. It starts with you. They're not going to be able to come in and sell something when you haven't developed the brand, the strategy, the ideas. Uh, don't, don't expect them to come in and be miracle workers when you haven't put the time in to give them the right resources and the right brand. All right, next slide. All right, it's time to do it, right? I'm coming to the very end of my time. Um, this is our last slide. Stop waiting for the right moment. You have to make the change now. You've got to make the decision to move your company forward. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can decide who you're going to be in your company. That's up to you, and it's up to you to say, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the right people in place. I'm going to put the vision out there, and we're going to get to work on it and do it. But the thing is, you can't wait. 
You just have to move forward. Okay, that's it, guys. That's the time that I have, and that's the presentation that I put together for you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Matt. We appreciate your insight and knowledge. Uh, just a quick note for everyone who uh, who's on board here and, and maybe came in late. All the slides and the presentation will be available. Uh, we will email that to everyone who registered, and we'll have that to you on, on Friday. So look for that in your email. Uh, again, all slides and, pres and the presentation you just heard, a recording of that will be available to you on Friday through your email. So uh, we do have a minute or two here just very quickly to go over a couple of questions that came in during your presentation, Matt. Um, the first question that came in are, you know, maybe what, what, what's one good, one good trait in a salesperson that, that might get overlooked? We always hear about energy and, you know, closing and all of those normal things, but what's maybe you want something that, that you look for that most people don't when you're looking for someone who's successful? Well, you know, if I'm looking for a salesperson who's, uh, who's successful, I mean, we see some folks come in who just have lots and lots of energy. Uh, they can get out. They can meet people. You know, we all know that that's the kind of personality that we need. The one thing that I really look for along with that that can be kind of hard to find is someone who really pays attention to details as well. Um, so, you know, having all this energy is great, and, and we do have to support them with things, but, you know, if they can't pay attention to, to some of the small details, um, you know, may not, may not be somebody that one of my sales team um, really depends on how, who I can support them with. So somebody who's detail oriented, which is tough to find in sometimes salespeople. Sure. And then one more question here. I, you mentioned uh, a couple of different ways to create culture in the office, but are are you a proponent of of doing things outside the office you know, in terms of team building and, and things like that in order to help create that culture? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any time that you can do something that um, that kind of builds up your team. Um, even something as small as just getting together for, you know, a lunch or a dinner outside the office. But, you know, there's all kinds of things we can do for team building exercises. But sometimes it's just, um, it's just that your team knows and they can be together on some sort of personal level. So anything like that I think is great. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's great. Uh, all right, everyone. Thank you for submitting your questions. If we weren't able to get to the question that you submitted, uh, we have collected all of those, and we will forward them to Matt so that he might have the opportunity uh, to answer your question later through email. So, again, we appreciate all of that. Uh, we're going to move forward now and, and take a quick survey that we mentioned at the very beginning of today's webinar. Uh, if you would, please see the poll on your screen and answer the questions as they appear. We're going to move through these fairly quickly, so please answer as swiftly as you're able. The first question of three today is, is very simple. I found this session very informative and helpful, and you should be able to see... Uh, those answers there in front of you, very helpful, helpful, neutral, unhelpful, or very unhelpful. If you would just go ahead and select uh, your answer there. We'll leave that open here for a few more seconds. And we can see some of the answers rolling in. And again, we do appreciate uh, your taking the time to provide us with the feedback. Okay, question number two then is, I found the 30-minute time length to be a good fit for my schedule. And it's very simple. It's a yes or no question. If you would take the time here, uh, maybe 10 seconds or so, to answer this. And we'll give it a couple of more seconds here. Okay. And then the final question is, I am interested in attending another iSeries webinar. And again, it's very simple. Yes, maybe no. And we'll leave that open here for probably five more seconds or so. Okay, I'll wrap up that part of that, and we do appreciate, again, your taking the time to give us your thoughts on, on what you're having presented here today, and obviously as we move forward through the rest of the iSeries webinar. So there we go. All right, now before we end today's session, uh, we do want to make note and want you to please note that you can build off what you've heard from Matt in today's iSeries session as he'll present more in depth on this topic at the National Auctioneers Association Auction Management and Operations Summit which will take place February 24th and 25th. You can see the information there on your screen. That will take place in Tampa, Florida. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, or want to request more information or even register, you can do so by emailing education at auctioneers.org. You can also call 913-563-5432. Or you can simply register at auctioneers.org slash 